hope this video finds you well. I went out and did some yard work today, cut the grass, decided to take a break and work on a paint project because, hey, that's what I do. Um, as I mentioned before, we're going to do different uh, projects throughout the series. Um, we're a couple of days away from Cinco de Mayo, so I thought uh, we'd do a little Cinco de Mayo themed project. Um, this is a painting from the catalog, Mission Twilight, which is for, I think I created around the time of Cinco de Mayo, and um, a nice, bright, colorful, uh, festive uh, painting. The little switch up that we're going to do today is we're going to actually do that two-dimensional image on a bottle. Um, those who are a little proficient with their tequila might recognize this as an Espolone tequila bottle. I thought that was, uh, you know, apropos to doing a uh, Cinco de Mayo um, project on a tequila bottle. Um, I want to talk a little bit about first how I prepped the bottle. I kind of got it ready to paint. Um, the first thing you do, like when you when you go to prep a bottle and you're trying to take off the labels, um, you could obviously soak the bottle, scrape it off. Um, what you're going to find is that that may not take off all the glue and then the adhesive. You could get um, goo gone, which is something that's used to take off labels and stickers. Um, I dampened that with some goo gone and got off all the uh, glue from the label. Um, and then just regular dish soap, washed the bottle up and got it ready to paint. Um, my first little coat on here to kind of get it ready to get painted, I used gesso just to give it a skin so that um, the enamel will actually have something to adhere to. You can base it with white acrylic paint. Um, you'll have to use a couple of more layers. Again, this is about using what you have at your disposal. If you don't have gesso, then using uh, white paint would probably work. But I did a couple of coats and kind of, like I said, made my surface ready to paint. Um, and when we finish the painting at the end of the video, I'll show you some actually useful little ways to kind of use your bottle um, going forward. Talking about some of the materials, um, yes, you can use acrylic paint, but what's ideal is using um, acrylic enamel. Again, you can find these at any craft store, uh, Michaels, a uh, AC Moore, even at Walmart. Um, or wherever you kind of buy your paint supplies. Um, these are just little tubes ranging from 99 cents to maybe uh, 249 because they're an enamel. This is a folk art brand and something that if I can get in the video is like when you're looking at the tops of them it'll tell you that it's ready for multi-surface that you can paint on wood, glass, or metal. Um, some of them They'll just show you that you can paint on glass. Again, it's an enamel, um, and that's fine. Uh, it's actually, it's optimal to working on glass. Just because you're touching a lot, you're doing a lot of holding, and, um, and your glass needs to have a tough surface um, to hold the paint and to kind of maintain its lasting finish. Tools you're going to use. You don't need a whole lot of paint, so your palette can be very little. Um, I use my little go-to when I'm doing my small projects. Brushes, uh, the assortment, uh, kind of a potpourri of whatever brushes, tiny brushes that you got laying around with the exception of, again, we go to um, a one-inch uh, flat to kind of do some of the bigger background stuff. I have any number of small little detail brushes, um, liner brush, small little, again, you're not going to need this many, really you might just need one, but I'm just showing you any assortment of um, a very fine detail brush. I got a couple of really tiny flats, like little filberts, either that 
or even something a little longer shader blender um, just to do some of the um, some of the drawing in the middle range brush strokes in the painting so the first thing that we're going to do um, and work with when you're working with enamel is you don't go a lot of back and forth this is really you're working from back to front as far as putting colors um, almost in the philosophy of doing printmaking so what we're going to do is put the lighter colors in the background and then the darker colors coming forward so the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to prep and we're going to we're going to put some nice yellow coat on this bottle And again, it's wherever at this point, however you can hold the bottle, however you can manipulate that, grab it upside down. Water is very sparingly, like you want to get your brush damp. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're going to get lots of drips and it's going to frustrate you. But I'm going to get a nice doll up of that enamel and I'm just going to start... And the thing is, you can twist the bottle, and just move your paint, holding your brush in place. And just spin in your bottle. Repeat this, it'll we'll color in the whole background. It's like you're making a second lap. What's good about the enamel, I mean, you're using a sizable amount of paint now. They come in these size tubes because really once you get down to business, as far as painting on like wine bottles, stemware, beer mugs, you don't use a whole lot of paint other than when you're doing this, doing your background. So having putting that white down, I need a little bit more yellow. Having put that white down and giving it um, a surface or a base coat to have your your enamel stick to. Just holding my brush there and lapping that around. It's also imperative that you want to just make sure that that base coat of either white acrylic paint or gesso or even a base coat if you're using white enamel, you want to make sure that's thoroughly dry. Otherwise, no different than painting on canvas, wet paint on wet paint is going to take that right off. It works as an eraser. And then you'll have to kind of patch that little area in. And start you know over from that little area but um, in this instance it's a warm sunny day out actually and I was able to put gesso on and set the bottle out in the sun and it dried in about two minutes So one of the challenges here too, while I'm thinking about this, is taking a two-dimensional painting and transforming it into a three-dimensional label or you know something that's going to kind of wrap around your bottle. And as you can see, this is a face forward kind of frontal, just one little section of that mission with the bells and the and the cross, you have to kind of imagine what's going to go around, wrap around the back side of the bottle, whether you want to kind of continue the architecture or you can end that and maybe you could put some other little thing in the background. I was thinking about a cigarro or a big cactus or something that kind of fits, but let's just get that done so that is your first step is getting that yellow background 
while it's still wet. A little damp. I'm gonna take a little white. Do I have a white that's open? Nah. I'm gonna take just a little dab of white. I'm gonna kind of bring up some of the white from the bottom. Grab it off my brush there first. I'm just making an even brighter, an even brighter yellow. Now, obviously this is right side up, but we're gonna work from the bottom. I know what I said about wet on wet paint, but if you're real gentle, I, I switch to my little filbert. I'm barely touching the bottle with that white or really bright yellow. And I'm just bringing up some of that color and I'm kind of making this variegated a little. Just a little bit. I can swirl that almost like you're making a fire. Yeah, interesting little brush marks in there. You can kind of... And again, I'm not digging in, otherwise I might take some of the paint off, barely touching. I mixed white and that yellow. I just made it just a little brighter yellow. Make sure I'm going all the way around. All right. I feel like I should have a margarita like in the frame. All right. And So I'm happy with that. Using up my little rest of my yellow. Okay. And so we're working with something like that because if you're looking at the painting in itself, you have like this white, just kind of like the sun setting. It's this really bright sunset and it's gonna go up into that yellow and we're gonna kind of replicate that on the bottle. And that is your first step. Okay, so the second step that we're gonna do is put the clouds in. So what I have is some pink enamel. Um, and like you're seeing in the original, um, there's just a, a series of like pink, fluffy clouds. My enamel's dry on there, so I can kind of handle it. So I just want to put in, and I'm using a small little square brush. If you wanted to use a liner brush or something, you can. It's always, like I said, what you feel comfortable with. So I'm just going to put in, I'm going to paddle in a couple little wisps. They almost look like eyebrows. No particular 
I'm going to be kind of cognizant that I'm holding the bottle, so I don't want to stick my finger in the paint, but I'm just a couple little blobs of pink. Round those off a little. I suppose I can... You're going to have to find what angles work good for you. Like if you're home and you're working on a dining room table, you know, working on your patio, wherever wherever you can kind of find a spot if you need to find a good angle. Um, like this is going to work for me, so this is going to enable me to put some clouds in the back because like I said, this is a three-dimensional space now. It's not just a painting that has a plane. So I'm just going to put in puffy little blobs of pink. All right. And you could draw those out. I mean, I'm just kind of going through it quickly. You know, as much detail or a shape or volume to those clouds as you want. That's, um, that's uh, up to you. I'm going to take a little white. I'm going to kind of feather that into the cloud. And give just a little depth. So even with the pink still on my brush that I just used to put the pink on there. I'm going to swirl. just want a pink hue to the clouds. They don't have to necessarily be pink clouds, but... Circular motions. You can always go back with a little of the pink, and you're kind of going back and forth to make... The clouds, the shapes, and the size that you want them to be. So again, I'm just putting white on the bottom of that pink. Maybe going back in with a little bit more pink. And kind of blending that all together. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm not rinsing between... clouds so the paint's still a little damp again I'm not digging in with my brush I'm just kind of laying that right on top of that pink find a little angle that works there for you something up here a little you know, I, I'm, I'm using this brush, finding some level of success with it. If you want to switch to your liner brush, you go ahead and do that. So these ones are on the back side there. All right. Got the ones down there. Warm days, you're going to find that this, based on when you're doing these bottles, like whether it's a warm day, whether you're outside, whether you're inside, your drying times are going to vary. I know we've painted stemware outside on warm days. It's like you can just steamroll right into the next step. If it's a warm day, but it's kind of humid, your drying times are going to be slowed. It just really kind of depends. And you can get ex ex as expressive as you want with some of these strokes. I'm taking some of that pink. I got everybody I want there. 
So, and I got my pink puffy clouds. Kind of went all the way around because I'm not really sure what where I want to go on the back side of this yet. But I'm going to find a nice area that I'm going to kind of use for the face. And really, that is your second step. Your third step is we're going to work on putting in the actual mission. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw out first the the building and map out the windows so the first because again we're doing three-dimensional we're going to find how big this is going to be so we'll start i know this is facing me i'm just going to paint a line and then show you i'm just going to kind of map out And as far as little peaks and bell towers, you could probably have as many as you want in there. I'm going to do a little something like that. Using my liner brush too, or a real thin brush to do my drawing with. I'm going to kind of come up here. Again, I'm not going to sweat about how straight my lines are. I'm going to kind of make a little, make a little arc. The thing is, working with a three-dimensional space is I can make these actually bigger than how they appear in the actual painting. If I want to kind of have this wrap around all the way around, I suppose I could, so that there ain't no dead sides. I just want to get my building on there first. And then I'm going to kind of come down. And I'm going to come over. I'm going to finish up About the same size. Come up. Arc that over a little. And then come straight down. All the while, like, being able to kind of just twist and move the bottle about. So if that is our mission, like I said, you're going to have some space around the backside where maybe you could put another little building or like I said, I'm thinking about a cactus or something, but I ain't going to worry about that if, for the time being. So while I'm able to draw out, one of the, the key features is having the bell towers and the windows. So what I'm going to do is get my point nice and thin. I'm going to have this arced window. I want to catch that cloud. So I'm going to have a nice little arced window. Right there. Being kind of careful. If you're painting and sipping, you want to go easy on the sipping at this point. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to get a straight line. Then, um... Down here, I'm going to do that same little shape. Same over here on where you have this little area. Start with that little arc. And yeah. Uh, 
So then you're looking at where your three windows are going to be. You got nothing better to do. Okay. Now I have a little a little extra real estate here. Um, I could put extra windows in if you feel so compelled because you want to catch some of that yellow background. Um, that's up to you. In fact, I think just for the sake of making this a little different than the original, I think I'm going to put little circular windows. up here in each little tower. And I'm just doing little circles. Okay. I'm gonna also kind of give, where we're gonna have a little fancy little brickwork um let's do that and we're going to do that by i'm sticking with that blue because we're going to kind of make that outline and i'm gonna make myself a little space and while i'm here Let's do that cross. Again, find the leverage that you need to have because I'm drawing these really two little lines and making a cross at the top of that. You want to make it a little thicker. do that build a little brickwork on the top of this guy starts with a little arc I suppose doing this you could make a Islamic version of this where you're doing minarets and doing like the Taj Mahal or something whatever kind of Buddhist temple maybe I don't know. anyhow okay same thing around your little windows. I'm giving myself a little border. To play around. And I'm doing with this blue. I had thought about maybe again, based on what other color paints you have. Um, you know, you could change the color of the silhouette of your temple. Of your now see I'm thinking about temples thinking about your mission so if you wanted to do a purple or black but I thought that this color combination this blue and the pinks and the yellows is really kind of nice and that's what I wanted to stick with although I think I'm going to substitute this kind of periwinkle color that light lavender I think I'm going to switch that for turquoise. I think that would be nice. So, like I said, I'm giving you suggestions, but you can kind of do whatever you need to do, whatever decisions you make. So now I kind of got the drawing on there for your windows. And this is before I fill all this in, because at this point we have this invisible mission. 
which also sounds like a good name for a band. Your little bells, your bell towers. Let's start with in your, in your little window space. And again, I'm using that brush. Um, you can even go to a smaller little detail brush. Maybe I'll even move down a little. Go to a, an even smaller gauge liner brush. Again, you can find these brushes in various places. You can shop online through Amazon or something like that. Um, these brushes that are detailed, particularly when doing bottles or doing small little spaces, these are the kind of brushes that they use when they paint like a Civil War um, dioramas and they're painting little soldiers and uh, war machines and all that stuff. But this is the same kind of brush. So uh, I'm going to kind of paint my bell tower. So I'm going to do a little line across there. A little line across there go to this window over here again doing the top of that arc so you got a nice little arc arc a nice little arc um your little circles I'm like i think i'm gonna I, I like just for balance architectural balance i am going to Put little shapes in there like that. Cut that space. I'm looking for the same thing for that space. Again, holding the bottle, finding where I can get the best angle to do. There you go. Okay. Have all this space in here i feel like i want to put something in there but i'm gonna I, I like the weight and the silhouette of the of the mission so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move back to this brush and i'm gonna take some of that i'm going into the blue the dark blue that i was drawing with now i'm gonna kind of begin to color in that space And what you're going to find is that yellow is going to bleed through. This might be a double coat kind of proposition. So what you would do is you'd paint it. We're going to cover this. And then chances are you'd probably give it a second coat so that it's nice and dark. I'm just coloring in nice and easy so as I'm doing my busy work I can talk to you a little bit about what purposes and what you can do with these bottles when you're done with them so when we do classes and we do um, bottle painting I usually offer either a choice of using a jigger um, that would go in the top that you could fill up your wine bottle or whatever bottle that you're using with like say olive oil and that you can actually use it around the kitchen you, know, you could put rosemary and herbs in there and fill it up with olive oil and all this stuff but you have this really hand painted this really nice hand painted bottle that um, kind of uh, it's kind of funky little showpiece to have in the kitchen when you're cooking um, something else that we do is that we have fiber optic lights so that when we do classes Again, I'll have a choice of either the jiggers for the olive oil or fiber optic lights. You put those in and you got this 
nice little night light that goes on a shelf or in your nightstand or wherever. So I'm just painting around. You know another color that would be really nice on this is to do like an alizarin crimson or like a burgundy merlot color wine color i bet you that would be really sharp okay So again, this is a step that we might have to repeat. So what I'll do is again, let, oh, I got this over here. I'm almost jumping the ship here. Again, you can think about, you know, you have all this space back here, all this real estate back here. I suppose you wanted to put in another tower um, I know like it's an architectural feature you wanted to put. Um, so I'm thinking about a cactus. I don't know. I have time to think about it. So you never want to get too contrived when you're painting about how you're you know planning out your whole entire painting. You got to kind of work with some of the things and being in the moment and what you're painting. But sometimes it's okay to think about at least a step ahead. You know, where am I going next? Or what could I do in that space? Or <clears throat> I suppose the day will come where we'll be at a party again together. And uh, you'll be thinking about what to drink next or who brought the French onion dip or something. I don't know. All right. So knowing... I gotta have a nice another step. I at least have my first coat of blue on my bottle. And then what I'll do next is I'm gonna repeat this step. And then in the next step, what we'll do is we'll begin to do some of the detail work around the windows. Next step is putting in some of the little detail work and uh, I guess it would be the um, terracotta brickwork that you see in the original painting. We're going to do that to a smaller scale on our bottle. Um, just to pick up, I'm going to move to my smallest detail brush and I have a little blue left of that dark blue and something that we want to do before we go on is we want to place those bells in there in our mission. Um, and hopefully you had time to put in a second coat or even a third coat or however dark you want your silhouette of that mission to be. Uh, however many coats you want, you put in there. Um, while we had a little break, I put in another coat and that seemed to do the trick. So I want to place my bells out. Different bells, different windows. Again, very small brush. I find myself the leverage I need to have. And I'm literally just going to draw a little bell shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. A little bell shape. I'm gonna go to this window down here. Same thing. In the pane below that line, in that little square below the line. Just gonna do a little bell shape. Same thing with the window over here. Okay. 
can be all little different sizes, but you're going to stick with that little brush, you're just using the tip of that brush. Again, let it dry if you want to put a second little coat on there so that the silhouette of those bells are going to be as dense and opaque as the rest of the architecture and the silhouette of the, of the mission. But there's all these little um, things that hold the bell in place. So let's use that top bell. It's going to have a little connector. Do that down here. Let's do a little arc, another little arc, a little doodaddy. Kind of hold that bell in place. Again, I'm just using the very, very tip of the brush. Same thing over here. Make a little arc. Make a little arc. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something that holds those bells in place. So something we can do before we put the light in. I always, I always say I like to work light to uh, light to dark. But what we'll do is while we're kind of doing uh, some detail work, we kind of go in and kind of checkerboard my uh, my windows here. I'm just every couple of spaces, just a brush with. Plus, it's given time for my bells to dry. I want my bells to be a little darker. Painting an Espelone bottle makes me want a margarita, which I will be enjoying on Cinco de Mayo. Actually, I got a bottle of tequila for my birthday. I may crack that open. Just add a little detail to that. Same thing to these guys down here. I'll start at the top. little tiny beads of paint and again I think what I'm going to do is switch up and instead of using like that powder blue I'm going to use a turquoise finish off the windows you want to really I'm keeping my my detail brush damp but you really want to make sure you get all the water out of there everything's fixable but you know really this is no time for drips same thing with this guy over here. I'm going to start at the top. Um, some other notes, I guess, as we are doing a little busy work. You notice you're going to have the top of the bottle. You got the little neck up here the bottom of the bottle, the little pattern, the little checkerboard pattern that's happening around the windows. 
on your own time if you felt like you wanted to put that little checkerboard pattern just to kind of finish off and almost frame the, your your little painting that's a thing it could definitely be a thing Okay. I'm hearing people out in the backyard there. My little bell should be dry. I'm going to quick grab a little dabs and kind of fill in my bell one more time. So that I kind of give it on the same, so that they're as opaque as the rest of the the building. Give a nice dark silhouette. Look at it from a distance there. I guess I'm good with that. I just want to make sure that these are as dark. You better use very little paint. All right. Okay. So as I mentioned, instead of using, like in the original, instead of using this powdery blue, I'm going to use a straight turquoise. So I'm going to use with the, with the same brush. Rinse out all that dark blue. And I'm going to take this really nice turquoise. And the same thing. We'll start out here. We'll start at the top of these little peaks. I'm just going to paint in this turquoise. Same up here. Again, you know, I'm using my fingers, using the bottle, kind of find the leverage that I need to have so that I can get neat strokes. Good thing is when the enamel's dry, you can put your fingers on it, you can touch it, and it really won't nick the surface or take the paint off. Um, something else too, for an added layer of protection, when you're done with the painting, something that you can use is a clear acrylic gloss. And that makes it shiny but it's almost like a thin layer of plastic that you paint on to the painting and it kind of seals it in and makes it even makes it even tougher to scratch or to take the paint off there's also matte finish if you didn't want it shiny you wanted it just kind of um, matte I guess then you know there's that but you can find any number of finishes or if you just leave the enamel on as is you'll be fine although I would I guess I'd suggest that if you're going to use it if it's going to be utilitarian and it's going to be in your kitchen and you're going to use it for cooking and olive oil and you're going to have your hands on it, I'd give it an extra layer of, um, 
of acrylic um, varnish or acrylic medium that's going to kind of seal that in. Down here, got my little, really, I'm just dabbing. You go over here, the tip of the brush. So it's not even like really it's a stroke. So if you're starting over here, all it really is is little beads of paint. Takes a second. That doesn't have to be perfect. I'm working on that pattern, that little checkerboard pattern. Move to the top here. Finding that you're getting tired or that like you're wrenching your neck or doing something, take a break. But once you get the rhythm of these little strokes, little pats of paint, it goes relatively quick. And again, based on how many um, tubes or how many colors that you have in your arsenal, you could probably add other colors to this. It doesn't necessarily just have to be what you know I suggest. If you have ideas, you, know, you can put that into your into your work. Again, thinking about how you could finish the bottle off. Thing is, you got a lot of real estate to work with. You got so the top of the bottle. I mean, you want it to be that it's a bottle, but you could put a little borders in and do whatever you want to do to really finish it off. Again, if you have time, and this is going to be a gift. And you could do that a little extra. You know what? I have all this turquoise left. The last little thing I'm going to do here. I can do around my windows. Just a little loop around there. Why not? So, really, there's your bottle. This is how it kind of shapes up with the two-dimensional Mission Twilight painting. And that's that step. All right, so the last thing that we want to do to finish off our project is... Um, I put lights, fiber optic lights, in my bottle. Um, but you can do with your bottle whatever you want to do. Anything from sand that you got on vacation, or even shells if you can fit them in the bottle, I suppose. Um, as I mentioned before in the early part of the video, um, you could put a jigger in there, fill this up with olive oil, and it's actually useful um, in the kitchen when you're cooking. But again, what I actually did was I have fiber optic lights that actually have like um, a simulated little cork on the top. Um, you might be able to find these at craft stores. 
Uh, I have a, a little uh, site that I use um, when I shop. It's Wish. Um, and I was able to get a whole bunch of them relatively cheap. You just string them in your bottle, thread them through, the cork will sit in the top, and you turn that on, and there it is. You got a nice little night light, a nice little centerpiece, something that goes on your shelf, by your bar. Uh, I imagine this will probably go on the table for Cinco de Mayo um, as we celebrate on Tuesday. Um, and there you have it. And that's how you turn a two-dimensional piece and convert that into a three-dimensional piece. And there it is, Mission Twilight. Um, so keep in contact with me. You can do that any number of ways. Um, you can follow me on my blog on rockpaintsip.com. And stay tuned. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. For upcoming videos, either on glass, canvas, or whatever else we decide to paint next. Until then, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon.